Hello and welcome to a learn to play video for 7C City 5 Sales, published by Pinebox Entertainment. Uh, the game is based on the second edition of 7C by John Wick, and which is published by Chaosium, a tabletop role-playing game. This is an expandable card game with a player-influenced ongoing story. So, to start, let's we'll start from the top. How do you win? <clears throat> there are three ways to win. The first way is to kill your opponent's leader. So, uh, each player will choose a leader and then build a deck around that. Uh, this tabletop simulator mod will be using the pre-made starter decks that we've made for Gen Con 2022. So if you'd like to get some extra practice in, you should use those. So for this demonstration, I'll be using Caspar Dietrich, and my opponent, or my demonstrator, demonstratee, will be Odette de Bois de Arendt. So, first way to win, kill the opponent's leader. So let's talk about these stats really quick. Uh, starting from the top left, that big red 9 is a character's resolve. Resolve is how many wounds a character can take before they're killed. And in this game, when a character is killed or destroyed, they are sent to the locker, which is effectively removed from game. So, Kaspar has nine resolve. Now, around his resolve is that nice spiky gold halo that only denotes that he's a leader. It says so in his traits as well. It's just a visual marker. So, under his resolve are three fists, and that is combat. That is how much damage a character uh, is at risk of doing at any given time. There's some... I'll explain that later. Uh, under that is two feet, which is two finesse. And under that is two crowns, which is two influence. Now, leaders also have two additional stats. Up in the top right, the first one is panache, which is generally how many cards per turn you will draw. And under that is crew cap, which is how many characters you can have in play, including the leader. So in this case, Kaspar can have himself plus six more characters. Caspar also reads, Caspar has plus two influence while recruiting mercenaries, and we'll go over that. And he has city action, reveal cards from the city deck until you reveal a mercenary. You may recruit it, sync all remaining revealed cards. Uh, in this game, sync means to take any of the revealed cards, randomize them, and place them on the bottom of the deck that they came from. Alrighty, so again, how do you win? First, kill the opponent's leader. Second, at the end of the day have seven renown. Now you're going to hear me say day a lot. In our game, the full round is called a day. When we've completed all of the phases and we go to the top of the next round, that will be the next day. Now renown are essentially victory points. These will appear on locations and you'll go and you will control them. You'll go about controlling them, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then you will get the renown on any locations that you control. And then at the end of the day, if you have seven renown, you win. The third and final way to win is called domination, which is to control all three locations. So it is very often the case that you will control one, maybe two locations. But if you have all three at the end of the day, you also win that way. So let's go through the phases of the day and game setup. So all you need to do to set up the game is put your leader into play, shuffle your deck. This is called your approach deck, is made of exactly 10 cards. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then you have the 30 card city deck. We randomize that, make sure that our threat and renown are nearby, ready to easily accessible. And that setup is just having your leader in play. So now we're going to go through the phases in order and explain how they work. Phase of the day, dawn, uh, we prepare the city for the next day. Really all that means is with our newly shuffled city deck, we place a card in each city location. Okay, so the city deck is made of exactly 30 cards. They are all uniquely numbered, and you know what, just for demonstrations, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that one right over there. And the city deck is made of characters, attachments, and events. This is the primary way that we can try to make sure that the game is still representing what's happening in the story, which is player influenced. So if we look at this card here, Captain's Coat, which is an attachment, Siren's Scream, which is an event, and Leha. Uh, Leha is a mercenary, 
one because it says so in her trait box, but any character that comes out of the city deck uh, is a mercenary. Now you'll notice that Leha is card number 27. This is important because let's say the community decides to have Leha join Aizen, for example, so that she joins Kaspar, then she would no longer be a mercenary. She would be taken out of the city deck and then we would have to replace slot 27 with something else. Or maybe she dies. And since people tend to be truly unique individuals, Leha will never appear again. And again, we would need a new slot 27. So that is the dawn phase. It's really just making sure that the city is set up and ready for the next day. Next, we have planning. In the planning phase, each player is going to grab their approach deck. All right, now the approach deck is made of exactly five characters and five schemes. You always get a character from your approach deck uh, at the beginning of each day for free. They're loyal to your crew. If you'd like more characters, you're going to have to recruit mercenaries, and I'll explain that in a moment. So each day, each, char each player is going to choose one character and one scheme. So for this example, I'm going to grab Terrell, and let's haggle. I've already set up this one. So during the planning scheme, the planning phase, each player chooses one character, one scheme. And then once all players have selected their character and scheme, we go ahead and reveal all of them. Boop, 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 boop. First thing that happens is our character comes into play. Their character comes into play. Uh, they grabbed Jean Urbain and we grabbed Terrell Brandt. Next, we compare schemes. Now, if we look here, schemes have two stats on them, initiative and panache. Whoever has the, in the highest initiative takes the first player token. The first player token denotes the first player to act in any given phase. And also, if there are any simultaneous effects, the first player chooses the order of their resolution. That's pretty rare, though. So, Midnight Shipment here has an initiative of 80, and we have an initiative of 77. Therefore, Odette becomes the first player. Now we resolve everything above that middle bar in player order, which says add a renown to the docks and the Grand Bazaar. So we shall add one to the Grand Bazaar and the docks. Then add a city card to the docks, which looks just like that. Uh, now, theirs is done, so they have theirs, and it just kind of sits off to the side. You'll notice that this has an action on it. It gives them an action that they can use for the rest of the day. Schemes kind of give you an idea about what you want to do that round. All right, now that they're done, we resolve ours. Add a renown to the Grand Bazaar and the forums. So here's one to the Grand Bazaar. Here's one to the forums. Reveal cards from the city deck until you reveal an attachment. Place it in the Grand Bazaar. Sink the rest. Aha, so a second right there, smuggled item. This will make it into the Grand Bazaar, and then, again, sink goes on the bottom. In the planning phase, you also draw cards. You will draw cards equal to your leader's panache, modified by that scheme's panache. So, for example, a debt here has a panache of seven, and then modified by zero. So they're going to grab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... And then let's give myself a color. Boop, boop. And I'm going to draw six modified by zero is six. Very good. That was the planning phase. So with the first bit, with the first phase, which is Dawn, just setting up the cards in the city for the most part, making sure the city's cleaned up. There's a cleanup phase down in the bottom during dusk, but this is the top of the day. Then we plan, so we set up and populate the city, add the renown to the locations. Now we go into the high drama phase. In the high drama phase, this is where the majority of the game is played. We'll be taking actions back and forth, and when we both pass, then we'll go into the plunder phase. Alrighty, so the first person to act is the person with the first player token. When you are in the high drama phase, you have a number of actions that are always available to you. So the first one, let's talk down the line, use an action. Uh, in our hand, you will find cards that have actions on them. You can use an action on a card from your hand, or you can use an action on a character in play. Important note, though, if you see here, Kaspar has city action, and move along here has city action. Anything that says 
whereas this simply says action. Anything that says city action requires that character to be in a city location, meaning the docks, uh, the forums, or the Grand Bazaar. So the first one is use an action. Second one is move. The locationality of this game is extremely important. So movement is very codified. However, pretty simple. Goes like this. Your character must be on guard. In this game, upright and ready to act is called on guard and sideways. Sideways, exhausted or spent. This is called engaged. So this is engaged and this is on guard. E-N space G-A-R-D-E. All right, so to move from any location, you must engage your character and then move to an adjacent location. To move, they must already be on guard. Now, you must move to an adjacent location. So what's adjacent? The docks and the forums are adjacent to each other. The forums and the Grand Bazaar are adjacent to each other. The Grand Bazaar and the docks are not adjacent to each other. And then each player also has a home, which is not represented by a physical card, which is adjacent to each location. So since Odette is the first player with the first player token, if Odette would like to move, Odette, who is on guard, could engage and then move to another location. Boop, boop. However, there is one exception, which is engage your character unless from home. Moving out of your home does not require you to engage. They still might need to be on guard, though. You cannot move an engaged character, but if they're at home and you'd like to move them, you can just move them for free. So it is Odette's action. She'll move over here. Let's do that pretty simple. Next is equip. Uh, equipping is pretty simple. I have a throwing knife here. This is my throwing knife. I like to attach it to, let's say, Jean, or I'm sorry, Terrell. And therefore, we're just going to go ahead and put that on him just like that. That's equipping. Equip an attachment from hand or your character's location. So what that is referring to are things like the captain's coat. If I want to equip the captain's coat, I have to have a character there. And then the captain's coat can only be equipped to a character that I have at that location. It can't attach to someone that's not at the docks. So let's talk about paying costs at this point. Uh, let's say Odette would like to buy the captain's coat. Costs in this game are, are satisfied by discarding cards from your hand. So in this case, the captain's coat costs two. Odette would like to buy the captain's coat. So this is her hand right here. We'll just go ahead and discard two cards. So she discarded two cards and she picks up the captain's coat. Just like that. Simple. Uh, by the way, anything that is in a city location, any city card that's in a city location that is available for purchase is uh, noted with the term available. If it ever needs you to look at something that's available, it has to be unbought, not, uh, not controlled by any player and in a city location. Next, we have the recruit action. Uh, let's say that Kaspar has moved his way up here. Now, recruiting is really cool. Recruiting is... Other than by mustering, which is getting your character at the beginning of each day, recruiting is how you'll pick up mercenaries and other characters. So, Laiha here costs five. I could spend my entire hand and I could discard all of them to buy Laiha. I could absolutely do that because I have a character at this location. Do do do. Choose an available mercenary at your location and pay costs. Put the mercenary into play at that location. Now, there's a reminder text there. Uh, the, the rule book actually is actually a little bit longer. It didn't quite fit on the card, uh, which is when you are doing this, you may optionally engage a character at that location and reduce the price of the mercenary by that character's influence. So in this case, if I want to buy Leha, she costs five. I could pitch my whole hand and buy her for five. Or I could engage Kaspar, who has two influence, and reduce her cost by five down to three. However, Kaspar has an ability that says that he has plus two influence while recruiting mercenaries. So while I'm taking the recruiting action, he gets plus two. I choose to engage him. Now he is four. Five minus four is one. So yeah, let's go ahead and discard precision. And I get Leha. When I do that, whenever you buy a mercenary, recruit a mercenary, they always come into play on guard at the location at which they were bought. They don't somehow appear somewhere else. So they're right there. 
Very good. Next up, uh, we're going to skip challenge. We're going to come back to that because that is the primary way combat starts. So we're going to do that one last. So next is claim. So we've talked a little bit about locations and we've talked a little bit about renown. How do we actually get the victory points? So whenever you do the basic claim, you are starting what's called a pressure check and pressure checks in this game are simply comparing the total of a stat between two players. So it looks like this. Let's say Jean is over here and I want to claim this location. So let me look at it. Uh, engage your character, pressure that location with influence. If successful, claim the location. I want to claim this location, the Grand Bazaar. I have two influence. Since I'm not recruiting, he doesn't get the plus two plus one. So I have three influence at this location and he, uh, Odette has only one here. So therefore I can engage my character and claim since I have three influence to one, I claim this location and I slide the renown over to my side. I do not get the renown yet. This gives the opponent a chance to claim the location back. That's very important. Second, you do not win on ties to be able to win a pressure check, you must have more. So in this case, if Odette were at the Grand Bazaar, it would be one, two, three, to three. I would not, if I initiated that pressure check, I would not win, so, so I shouldn't do it. So let's say that uh, I did that. Whoop, whoop. Jean is here. We'll put Odette in the forums. I bought Leha, so he's engaged. Now I'm going to use Leha to claim this location. It's three, two, one. I claim this location. Odette's action now is to move over. Now they have a total of four to my three. But now since they moved over, it's my action. And since all of my characters are engaged, my action is going to be to pass. Whenever you pass, you're giving priority, the action, back to the opponent. When both players pass consecutively, the drama phase is done. There's no takesies backsies. If you want to do something, you need to do it when you can. Uh, note, though, that when you pass and then your opponent does something, you may still take an action. It does not lock you out of being able to take another action. So, I claimed this location. Odette moved over. I pass. They're four to three. Now, Jean, with an influence of one plus three from Odette, is four to three. They claim this location. I pass. They pass. Very good. Now that we've both passed, since all of our characters are largely spent, they're engaged. Now that we've both passed, we're going to move on to the plunder uh, phase. Plunder. Very simple. First, collect all your renown. Well, they control this location, so they get those two. No one controls these locations, so they stay there. Now we check to see if anyone has won. Well, both our leaders are alive. Odette only has two. I have zero renown. And no one controls all three locations. So the plunder phase is over. And so now we go to dusk, which is cleanup, which does have an order, but it's pretty squishy. So cleanup just says all of the city cards that were not used are thrown away. All of our characters on guard. All of our characters come home ready for the next day. Uh, unclaimed renown stay in play. That's very important. And then our scheme goes away, is sent to the locker. So now I have three characters. This is Odette's hand. This is gone. And they've got two characters. All right. So now that is the end of the day. We go to the top of the next day. Dawn, we, pre we prepare the city. We each choose a character and a scheme. So I'm going to choose, let's say, Parlay and... Philip. Odette is going to choose sword and bastion. We then, so that was very quickly the dawn phase Then we each planned. So now let's go ahead and flip and flip. We muster our characters. Doot, 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 doot. We check to see. Uh, uh, they have a 63 to my 55, so they keep the first player token. They add a renown to the forums and the docks. 
Let's see here, forums and docs. I add, I may move, I add a renown to the forums. Then each opponent may move a renown from any location to the forums. And I think Odette is going to want to. So now the forums is stacked with four. There's going to be a big fight in the forums this turn. Then we draw cards. Uh, I have a plus one on my panache, meaning my panache of six is now seven, so I pick up seven. The, uh, to have a hand this large, by the way, is pretty rare because we didn't actually spend much or do th do much in the first round, but I wanted to get a large hand so I could show off how combat works. And then Odette is also going to draw seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's her hand. All right. Our schemes sit off to the side, and then we're right back to the drama phase. So those are the phases of the game, the order they go in, what you should do in each phase, and also <clears throat> the actions that you have available to you in the drama phase. So now, let's talk about combat and how combat works in this game. So let's just go ahead and dump everyone in the forums so we can explain how the combat works i'm going to go over it a couple times by and adding a few things as we go firstly do i have a lang short i sure don't I really like a lang short there we go let's put this in my hand okay so one of the actions that you have available to you is the challenge action let's say jean wants to fight let's say oh no leha yep sure leha jean wants to fight leha so therefore jean is going to engage and then target an opposing character opposing is a very important term in this game and it means an enemy character at the same location as your character or this character so since leha is opposing jean uh jean can target leha he's going to grab one two three threat and target them onto Leha. Now I, as that which is challenged, have an immediate decision to make, which is, would I like to intervene? So basically, if I don't want Leha to die, I could engage another character and say, no, you're actually fighting that character instead. Think of it as a get down Mr. President sort of thing. So I am going to do that, actually. I'm going to uh, actually intervene with Tyrell. Now I'm going to go over combat a few different times to explain some stuff, but this is the most basic form. Fantastic. So I have three threat coming at me. And now that the challenge has happened, the duel has now occurred. Each character is called a participant and the opposing character, the opponent character in the duel is called the adversary. Do not think of the duel as I'm the attacker, you're the defender. I'm the challenger, you're the challenged. Do not think of it that way. Think of it as we are participating in a duel and you are my adversary and I am your adversary. We, this is a shared experience. So Jean has sent three threats to me. Whenever you have threat in your threat pool, you have two choices. Don't play a card or play a card. So let's go over the first one first. If you don't play a card, you take that threat as wounds. Very simple, just like that. Couple things about that very quickly. The duel is only over when all threat is resolved. That rule is so important, I originally put it in the book twice. Combat dueling is only over when all threat is resolved if i take all the wounds and there's no more wounds to deal with for any character then the, then the duel would end now let's see here jean has three combat if somehow he sent five which is pretty possible if he had sent five on the opening volley like that and then i took all five of them then i would only take three this is called restricted hostilities this is this what this says is that a character can only do as much damage as they have combat per round of the duel so since he has a combat of three i can only take three round, three wounds each round terrell having uh, a resolve of five means that he's pretty beefy all right, so that's the simple one. Don't play a card. So now let's actually duel. Let's play a card. Hmm. What is a good example? So let's use this card. I know that trick. So this card has a maneuver. Terrell has a technique. Jean has a technique. We're going to ignore techniques and maneuvers for right now and just talk about the basics of dueling. 
When you play a card, you always do all of its combat values in order every time. At this point, you should have noticed that on the bottom left-hand corner of every card in the deck are three numbers. You always do them in order every time, and they have very specific names. They are called, from top down, Riposte, Parry, Thrust. So, assuming I don't want to do any technique or maneuver, I'm just going to go ahead and use my combat values. You always do them in order every time, so I'm going to play I Know That Trick, and we're going to do them in order. First one is a repost one. I repost one back at him. So I reflect it back. Then I parry one. I take one and I put it away. Now I thrust one, so I get a brand new one, and I give it to Jean. Now... And now that I've resolved my maneuvers and my techniques, I chose not to do any. And now that my combat values, my repost, parry, thrust, or for short, we call it RPT. Now that my RPT is over, I resolve the threat. I confirm that these two are going to Jean. They're now in his threat pool. And as I did not remove this one, I take it as a wound. That's it. Combat is only over when all threat has been resolved. Jean has wounds on him right now, so now Jean has, has to play a card. So let's take a look in their hand. Or they can choose not to play a card. All right. Jean is pretty nifty. So he's going to use Master of Valro style. Now you'll notice that this card has a cost. The cost is associated to the maneuver. You can always play a card for its combat values. You do not ever have to spend any resources or any money just to do the RPT. You always can play a card for just its RPT. The cost is associated to the maneuver or the technique. So, once again, just very simply, he's going to repost one, whoop whoop, parry one, and then thrust one, whoop whoop. He takes none, and I've got two coming back at me. All right, now that is the basics of dueling. However, there is one more way that you can play a card. It's called gambling. When it is your chance to play a card, you can either not play a card or play a card. And then when you do play a card, you have two ways you can do it. You can play it from your hand, as I have just shown you, or you can gamble. A character can only gamble as many times as they have finesse. So you'll notice here that Terrell has a finesse of two. Uh, so does Jean. I'm pretty sure Bastion has a finesse of four. Yeah, he can do this a lot. So when you gamble, you give up your hand. What you're saying is, I'm not going to use a card for my hand. And when you choose to gamble, you can't come back to it. When you gamble, you reveal two cards from your deck. In this case, ooh, not good for me. So I guess we'll just do Fight Through the Pain, actually. This is a good example. Now, when you gamble a card, put it into your line engaged. Okay, so this is called the dueling line. As you play cards in the duel... Uh, keep them face up and don't discard them until the duel is over. And this line that you make, you're going to play them slightly splayed over so that way you can see what cards you've played in the past. This is called the dueling line. And then by putting your gambled cards into the dueling line engaged, this will help you keep track of how many times you've gambled this duel. Remember, you can only gamble as many times as your character has finesse. So this is a good way to keep track of that. Alrighty. So now let's talk about... Techniques and maneuvers. Each round of the duel, you may use one technique and one maneuver. The order in which you use them does not matter, but the timing is player card, technique maneuver, RPT resolve. You always do the techniques and the maneuvers before you do your RPT. And then once you've done your RPT, you then resolve the threat. So let's take a look at Terrell. He's got a technique of plus one thrust. And Throwing Knife says, destroy this card for plus one thrust. Since these are both techniques, I can't use them both. So I'm going to go ahead and activate Terrell's technique of plus one thrust. I am also going to activate this maneuver, which says, if this character has any wounds, then gain plus one parry. Very good. I've activated my technique. I've activated my maneuver. Much like Master of Valro's style up here, this had a cost of one. Fight Through the Pain does not have a cost, therefore I don't need to spend for it. Again, you don't need to spend for RPT, you spend for maneuvers. 
Very good. So now I do my RPT. I have zero parry, except I activated the maneuver, which says if this character has any wounds, and I do, then I gain plus one parry. So I'm going to parry one of that away. Then I'm going to do thrust five. One, two, three, four, five. But remember, Terrell gave me plus one thrust, so six. So now Jean has six to deal with. Reminder, even though he's got six here, I can only do three damage. So this is giving, this is setting him up to take a lot of damage, but that means that he can either try to avoid, avoid it all, which would be very difficult, or he's just gonna hit me hard right back. Very good, now I resolve the threat. This goes that way, I take my one. It's now Jean's turn. Wanna see if he has a very specific card for me to teach, there we go. Ah, there we go, this is a fun one. Uh, he doesn't wanna take all this damage, so he's going to play not today. You'll notice that this does not say maneuver on it. Therefore, this is not a choice. You must do this. So he's gonna play it. He parries one, two, three, four, five. Uh, resolves and then says, when your round ends, move home engaged. Very good. So now he's home engaged and he hasn't sent anything back. The, the duel is over. Jean started that fight, remember? So now we just take our dueling lines and we discard those cards. Do do do, just like that. These are gone. And since Jean started that fight, it is now Caspar's action. And Caspar could do something like claim this location because I surely have more influence, right? Two, three, four, five. Yeah, five, six, three, four. Yep, I have more. I have more. Picking up four here. So that is the basics of dueling. There's a few other things to talk about with dueling. Uh, the first one meaning uh, going to be, let's talk about lethal, which means that I need the card heroic end. So let's say that I've got all of this. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's do it like this. Let's say I have three threat going at John, who has one wound on him right here. And I'm doing this fight with Terrell and I fought with him. Very good. So now I have three threat going to Jean, which means that since he has a resolve of four, he'll die if he takes all of this damage. So on his round, he's going to play a heroic end, which has a maneuver. He's going to activate it, and it says final strike, plus two thrust, and lethal. Final strike is the card that you played on the round in which your character died. So he plays his card, he activates uh, the maneuver Final Strike. Now he's going to do the RPT, he reposts nothing, he parries nothing, he goes one, two, three, he adds three new ones to me. And then he's going to resolve the RPT, this is going to kill him, which means then one, two, gain two more thrust and add it to me. His character is sent to the locker, and now I have five to deal with, and his character is gone. Let's say that I'm not wounded, so that I can live through this example. Okay, so now that I have five damage here, remember, his combat is three, so he, I can only take three damage. However, he used a card with lethal. Lethal says all of this damage matters. You ignore restricted hostilities. Even though his combat is a three, all of this will do damage to me now. And since I don't have a lot of choice on this, I'm going to use Well Equipped, which has, uh, ooh, ooh, yeah, it's cool. So I'm gonna use Well Equipped, uh, which is, has a maneuver, it says plus one repose, draw a card of this character has a weapon. Well, remember earlier my throwing knife? So I'm going to discard answering the call to pay for well-equipped, and now I have three reposts. I go one, two, three. Three reposts, the two plus the one from the maneuver. I'm gonna draw a card for using the maneuver, and then I thrust one. Now I resolve the threat. This is going back to him, and I take the two. Now this is important. They no longer have a participant in the duel. However, I still sent the, the damage back. Just because you killed yourself doesn't mean I don't get a chance to defend myself. And if I defend myself with reposts, it, it reflects back. It just does. But now, since you have no one in this duel to interact with that threat, then the threat is fizzles. It just goes away. And now the duel is over. 
that is the second complication to dueling. The last thing that I want to talk about with dueling is issuing a challenge and a round of the duel are different things. So to explain that very quickly, a technique can only be used once per duel. Actions in the game can be used once per day, and anything that doesn't explicitly give a duration for how long the effect is for, uh, end at the end of the day. However, duels are a little microcosm. Any effect, any ability can only be used once per duel, and if it doesn't uh, say, if it doesn't give a duration, it'll, it'll end per round. So, issuing a challenge, however, is a little bit different. Issuing a challenge is a little bit different. So let's say that I want to fight Jean with Tarell. I issue him a challenge. No one else is here, so there's no intervening. Just very simple. As soon as I issue the challenge, I may activate a technique. So I'm going to say, I challenge Jean to a duel, and I'm going to use his technique. So he's going to generate one, two, three threat because of his combat, and I'm also using... Terrell's technique to open the duel. Therefore, I open with four threat. Um, thrust, your combat turns into thrust in when you are issuing a challenge. So there we go. I've opened with four. This technique that I've used in the issuing of a challenge is considered to have been used for the duel, even though it wasn't during the duel, it was during the challenge. Now, that last thing that I just explained, opening a duel with a technique, is one of the slightly more complicated parts of dueling, still pretty easy. And what I have just now given you is a pretty complete basic overview on how the game is played you uh, move around the city claim locations pick up victory points renown challenge each other to duels and swashbuckle your way to victory uh whoever has seven victory points or seven renown at the end of a day or if you control all three locations within the same day or if you manage to kill the opponent's leader good luck trying to kill odette by the way she has, when Odette is challenged, your on-guard musketeer at her location may intervene without, in, without engaging. She has an entourage protecting her, protecting her as she is a proper lady. So this is a pretty relatively quick, pretty good example of all of the options available to you in the game. We have not talked about the Don Constanzo Scarpa, who is Vodachi. Celine Elgato, who is Castile, or Yevgeny the Boar, who is Usura. This video is not a good substitution for reading the rules. I highly recommend that you do that as well. But one of the most complicated and one of the most difficult things for people to grasp we've discovered in testing was dueling. And just by seeing it done a couple times, everyone seems to get it. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope that you're interested in 7C and I hope to see you at Gen Con. My name is Robert Croy. And if you are coming to Gen Con, come hit me up. Have a good one.